Good morning, happy Tuesday. For some reason I was drawn to think about how can I make more peace in my own life. I don't lead a stressful life and yet my heart, my resting heart rate, my blood pressure are numbers that I don't like and the doctor doesn't like. Some of it's genetic and some of it maybe is my own personality being too stressed. However, the body can't tell the difference where the stress source comes from. All it knows is these things that happen in our body physiologically to deal with it. Stress in your body can even be not getting enough sleep. So maybe work on that. Even if it means um, having to do things that you wouldn't normally do, I'm not suggesting taking a sleeping pill, but like looking at ways you can reduce sleeplessness to ultimately help your heart and your stress. Uh, women's bodies respond unfortunately very easily to stress and it results in cortisol, belly fat, heart issues, and unfortunately, we're more at risk of a stroke than men. So that's my work the next few weeks. How can I use my yoga tools to reduce my stress and ultimately reduce my resting heart rate? So I thought, what are some things that I've done all these years? I've been fortunate to have yoga and yogic practices in my life since I was probably 10, but maybe practicing yoga since I was about 18 and then throw in a lot of things that my mother would call new age. So one of them is this singing bowl and often people will use it and there's a tack in it. People will use it to corral their senses inward or to the sound to shut out the things in their mind. So you've probably seen me do this. Why isn't it? I don't know if you can hear that. So I need a flat hand. If I cup it, I stop the reverberations and vibrations that are happening in this. So I get the bowl going. And I'm barely touching this, but the, the vibrations in this bowl are singing. They're resonating. And this wooden tool that's wrapped in velvet helps that noise continue. Some people use singing bowls, metal or crystal, actually on their body to help them relax. Um, I went to this one place in Hawaii, it was amazing. It had singing bowls this big, made of paper thin white quartz all over this studio and they did entire concerts of it. They were so precious that when they flew with them to do concerts, they actually had to book a seat for each one. And the sound and the calmness that it immediately brought into me, just walking this room with these crystal or quartz singing bowls, the other day there's a, an artist I follow, a musician, and he tends to make um, instruments, beautiful vintage strings instruments out of gourds, all kinds of salad bowls. You would not believe how beautiful his music is. He was doing singing bowls this big. And he said, these were actually uh, aluminum pots. And he said, since he was a child, he could take pots that were in his home, especially old ones, and do the same thing, get that harmonious sound coming out of an everyday object. Um, so I thought starting going forward, I miss our Shavasana so much. I'm going to do a little reading and then, um, we will do a five minute seated breathing. And if you would prefer to lie down, that's your welcome to you as well. And I was trying to think, how can I get more peace? You're not going to believe what reading I opened. When I opened this book, I thought I need a reading on how can we bring more peace to our life? Because even if you're not stressed, even if you have lots of food in your belly and a roof over your head and a healthy family, our brain right now has so many things going on in our culture beyond our homes. Um, so many things going on on a worldwide scale that we might feel upset or uncertain about. So many things happening in even the real estate market, your neighborhood community, even the municipal election caused a lot of stress for some people. Never mind school stress if you have children in the school system, um, food insecurity, like there's just so many things that our body is trying to, I think of them as cobwebs or trying to like get through them and that's a lot. And guess what reading I pulled? Cultivating peace in your daily life. It's actually dated for today. To find, to feel peaceful, try to cultivate peace in your life on a daily basis. Cultivating peace involves spending more time engaging activities that foster this feeling within you. Whether it's getting out in nature, and that's something I need to do more, going for a walk in your own city, or sitting to meditate. Surround yourself with people who share your vision and support your dreams, so you engage in harmonious conversation and interaction. 
arrange your home in a way that feels inviting and restful. So even there's studies showing that if you have a lot of clutter in your home, it mentally creates stress and cortisol release as well. Arrange your home in a way that feels inviting. Embrace each aspect of your life that nurtures your inner calm and creates an inner and outer tranquility in your life. So it starts with our material world and then shifts to what's happening in here and here. Um, and what's interesting is the, some of those tricks to cultivate more peace in our life are so simple and they're free. Um, okay, so we're going to sit for five minutes. Maybe today we'll start with three minutes. I'm going to sit in Sukhasana sweet seat, hands on my thought knees. I'm just going to gently either soften my eyes or close my eyes. I might do both because I need to keep track of the time. I put on some uh, native flute music, indigenous flute music, because I find that calming. It reminds me of nature. <sighs> so find a place in the body that's calm, so that the mind can be calm. Maybe your legs, <coughs> excuse me, are extended, or maybe you're lying down. Shoulders back, gently drop them. Inhale through the nose. Pause at the top of the inhale. Hold it and slowly exhale through the nose. Now we're gonna do the count of four on each portion of the four parts of the breath. And so that you get the idea of the pacing and then you will find your own method of that. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Pause, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Pause, two, three, Four. Inhale, two, three, four. Pause, two, three, four. Exhale, pa two, three, four. Pause, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. You can continue on your own.
hands. <clears throat> Coming into open attention. Take a big breath in. It's okay if your shoulders go up and let it go. <sighs> Two more times. Big breath in. And let it go. <sighs> Maybe today we'll do our work seated just to switch it up a little. So my legs are crossed in Sukhasana, my sweet seat. Everyone's gonna have a different variation of what's comfortable for them. And actually, let's try all three variations. So, seated, left hand on the floor, right arm reach up. And I think of my rib cage as a paper accordion or lantern. I wanna extend as much space between each rib. Right sits bone roots down, palm reaches up, one long line. Option to bend this left elbow and come on a diagonal. So now I'm reaching out towards the corner of the room. And option, make an arc and come out. I'm going to switch the legs. Still in Sukhasana. Right palm down, left arm up. One long line from left sits, sits bone out through hand. Lengthen, 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 lengthen. Option to come on a diagonal. Lengthen, 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 lengthen. Option to come in arc. Oh. And this action of side bend here is really important as a lower back uh, benefit if you sit a lot or if you tend to store tension in your lower back and then come on it. I'm going to take out left leg and keep right leg in. We're going to do the same experience. Left hand to left thigh, right arm reach up. Engage the core, so I'm stabilizing, almost like I'm wearing a corset. Reach up, diagonal, option to arc. If you're in the arc, you want to take that right shoulder back and look up over your, kind of behind your right bicep to the ceiling. And then come on out. Right palm to the mat, left arm reach up. Let's open up the shoulder and we do the Pete Townsend. I like to spin this oh, and come back down. Let's switch it out. Left leg in, right leg out. Right hand to the leg. First arm straight up reaching. Left knee presses to the mat and the left hand reaches up. Diagonal. Reach, 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 reach. And then adding the arc. Option to turn. So you're moving that left shoulder back and looking up to the ceiling. Bring it down, left hand down, right arm open. Pete Townsend. Okay, I'm gonna take both legs out and roll out the ankles, point and flex. I don't give this activity enough action as much as it should. So flex and then point. And you really wanna exaggerate this because I'm noticing with a lot of our students as we age, the feet are the unsung hero of our health and happiness. And quite often it's the first piece that starts to give us issues. And I remember even our classes in person, almost every other person had a different foot issue, even if we're not in a career on our feet. Now we want to do the wave with our toes. I love this because um, anytime we can work on strengthening the arch and the connective tissue in the soles of the feet, so wave. So I start with my right toes, my baby toes moving in. Wave, 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 wave. Wave. Now I can't do the opposite way. Big toe out to small. And then I want to make a fist and spread. Fist and spread. When I went to the foot doctor for um, my plantar fasciitis, the guy said we should be doing things that help this action. So I have heard that some people like to stand on one leg and put um, a bowl of marbles in one spot and an empty bowl in the other and you use your feet to try to pick up the marbles and drop them down. And I'm sure you could do Lego, um, maybe with something bigger. I think cotton balls might be too flimsy. The idea of sucking up to center. Our arch is the connective tissue that as we age, this is supporting all of our body weight. So every five pounds we go up, we're putting more and more pressure. And so also after 45-ish, um, we're losing collagen, probably even after 35. And that tissue is really strengthening from collagen. This skin is from collagen, this connective tissue is from collagen. As I have less and less of my own natural collagen, I start to collapse in that arch. And this leads to knee problems, hip torsion, lower back issues, feet problems. 
So I can't recreate that arch, but I can do my work to strengthen. That's why we go on tiptoes and flat. And while we're talking, I'm fist spread, fist spread, fist spread. Um, practice going up on your tiptoes, up and down. That's going to help the quads, your balance, your proprioception. It's also going to strengthen your feet. And now let's make a fist and then release. Fist, release, fist, release. Now I want to come on my knees so that I can stretch the tops of my feet. Not everyone loves this. So I can either just lean back, my body weight pressing down on the tops of the feet is enough for some people. Some people will keep their feet down and stretch this way. I love this. Oh yeah, I haven't done this in a while. And then come back down. And again, my body weight's into my wrists, my palms. When I do this activity, I'm stretching the tops of my feet. Not everyone will love this. You might even barely lift an inch. Opposite direction, tuck, and that's spreading out the toes, stretching the, between each toe and the fascia. It's right underneath the skin. I like to rock a little side to side, toes are spread. Some people believe, there's a belief, that sitting with your toes tucked like this stimulates the pineal gland, and for the life of me, I can't remember what's good about it, but I know Yana, and some people will Google that. And if I sit back, I know this is impossible for some people because of knee issues, or this is hurting their feet, but the more I can spread my toes and then sit back, I'm getting a really deep stretch. Think about how pets stretch their face. And maybe you're gonna rock a little side to side, and then when I've had enough, I'm going to tap out my feet. Now I want to focus on our arms. Same situation. Wrists come into the same situation as um, ankles. So spread. I'm going to come, take my finger in here. This was a guitar stretch. And your, each finger has three, digits, three sections. So I'm going to gently push against each joint or each section. Push, 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 push. And it's harder on my thumb. Now maybe I should do the other direction. Push, push, push. There, I got a nice crack. Push, 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 push. I don't have any hand issues, but I have to say a lot of my friends that are a little bit older than me um, often would develop joint issues. Um, and it could be from your career, your inflammation, food. Quite often food is a big piece. A lot of arthritis is linked to inflammation. Google it. So now I'm gonna stretch the other hand. Oh, I heard some nice cracks. Stretch, 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 and then the other direction. Stretch, stretch, stretch. I know this is boring, but if you type a lot or knit or paint and then shake it out, I'm going to interlace my fingers, press the palms away. If this is available to you in your shoulders, I love this stretch. Not everyone does. And then you're going to try to pull your hand away from yourself. So the resisting oh, it feels great. It gets right into the joints. Hands out front. Oh, actually, we'll do this one. Left hand out, I think of Spider-Man spraying webs. Gently pull down. Oh, so intense. And then this direction. If you're in martial arts, quite often this is the one that they do. Shake it out. Other side, fingers point down, pull. This is a stretch that if you're on small technology, especially phone and tiny laptops, Maybe you make beaded jewelry, anything with the fine muscles, you're going to need this stretch. And then the massage therapist taught me, we do this quite easily, but I also need to stretch in this way. Oh, so you're going to make a fist, the fist faces you, and gently pull on that fist. Oh, you're going to feel it in the front of the hand, the wrist, the forearm. Oh, shake it out, fist with the other hand. And you might notice your dominant hand is a lot tighter. Press, and then I even do this in my sleep sometimes trying to stretch out this wrist. Shake it out. Now imagine your hands are taking the dials of an old-fashioned radio. Turn the dials and bring those hands here. This is probably my favorite annoying wrist stretch. Oh, palms press down. You're going to lean back. Oh. And I don't know about you, but there are certain stretches in yoga that are bittersweet. I feel the stretch. Sometimes I love it. It's almost like you're looking for that intense sensation. And shake it out. Another variation, again, the tops of the front of the hands, like this stretch. I'm going to take the backs of my hands to the floor. I feel like an orangutan here. Press the fingers down. 
That one is a little more tense. Okay, let's come to the mat. We'll do a little bit of floor. Oh, I said we're gonna do three ways of this. Third variation, legs wide, probably my favorite. I'm gonna point and flex here. I want you to enjoy this. Marvel at your body, the symmetry. And sometimes at the end of a yoga practice, the asymmetry from an injury is removed or diminished and we're back to symmetrical limbs and function. Point and flex, pretend you're in a ballet school. Point, do the wave again. Roll out the ankles, hear that nice cracking. It's just air, is it called synovial fluid? Left hand to left leg, right arm reaches up. There's that lengthening, but without lifting the bone. If you can bring the shoulder back, bicep by the ear, reach, 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 reach. Now maybe I'm gonna go to diagonal. Reach, 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 reach. Maybe I'm gonna roll the shoulder back and look at the ceiling. Another variation would be to bring the hand to the base of the skull, elbow to the ceiling. You're getting a nice side body stretch. Again, this is helpful for the lower back. Option to take the left arm on the inside and go in a little deeper. Option to try to grab this big toe, shoulder goes back. And come on out. Roll up the ankles again, fan the toes, point and flex. If this is too straight for you, you're placing a bean bag or a rolled up washcloth under behind the knees so that we're taking the pressure off the hamstring. Right arm, right leg, <clears throat> left arm in the sky, lengthen, lengthen, option to go on a diagonal, so now I'm starting to help stretch the side body and lower back, option, oh sorry, so I'm on a diagonal, or hand at the base of the skull, shoulder rolls back, elbows to the ceiling, and you look up to the ceiling, if that's okay in your neck. Option to come on the inside of that leg and or can try to grab the toe. Come on out, roll up the ankles, point and flex. Legs together. I'm gonna do our side body stretch one more time. Left hand down, right arm up. Maybe this is your version that sings to you. Reach up, diagonal, or arc without tipping. Option to come at the base of the skull, elbow to the ceiling. And come on out, roll up those ankles, point and flex. All of our interconnectivity is so obvious when I work on my foot and ankle, my legs and lower back respond, it's wonderful. Left hand up, right arm reaches down, so lengthening in opposing directions. Option to take hand to the base of the skull and pull that shoulder back, Ooh. and release. Let's take both hands to the sky, holding an imaginary beach ball. Look up, there's a tiny back bend. Reach up, engage the core. And I'm visualizing sits bones rooting down, fingertips rooting to the sky. So there's lengthening. Option to arc a little back. Coming into cactus. Option to try to bring those shoulders even further back. Imagine there's a telephone pole behind you. And you're trying to wrap your body around that, bringing the shoulder blades together. Arms to center. This is the piece that some of you, I think, said you struggled with, bringing the elbows together. Palms spread. And let's go up and down a few times. Open. Option to come to side body. Open. Triangles. You know we enjoy doing this variation. All of this is getting, preparing my vessel for sitting in meditation or stillness. And release. A counter pose from having our legs up for so long, we're gonna bring the soles together, hands to the ankles, sit up straight. We're gonna stay here for three breaths, eyes are closed. I'm just checking in with all the different joint places in your body. So I think about the joints in my toes, checking with my feet, how do they feel? Notice the sensation of your own skin, toe to toe touching, pressing into each other. Checking in with your ankles, all the way into your knees. If this is uncomfortable, you're extending the leg that's uncomfortable. And then checking with where the hips join in, sorry, the thighs join into the hips. Chest is nice and tall. 
And with your eyes closed, you can do a gentle cat cow by holding the ankle or calves and coming in and out. You might be holding the knees. This cat cow is harder than when we're on tabletop, in the tabletop. When you come into cow and your chest is pressing forward, often turn your face to the imaginary sun. Exhale into cat, hollow out. Inhale, cow. Exhale, hollow up cat. Chin to chest. Oh yeah. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Come to neutral. While we're here in diamond, maybe we need to move the feet out a little further. Elbows bend outwards to the inner knees. And I'm gonna position myself like I'm about to forward fold. I don't have to go very far. I just wanna feel a tiny stretch in the back of my legs and hips and lower back. Elbows pressed down, face is in line with the spine. Let's do three breaths here. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Option to stay here, option to upright, or final piece, binding around the sole of the toes, hinging as deeply as it feels good, but not humping the upper back. Let's either eyes are closed or gently uh, <clears throat> half open, staring beyond your feet. Three breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Upright. Extend the legs and roll up the ankles once more. That might have been intense for some of you seated in the same position. So I'll do this spread, this spread. Awesome. Our final sort of Shavasana will be seated or lying down, whatever's better for you. And then we will still finish with them. Actually, we will do the reading after the breathing. So hands on your knees or lying down, sitting up straight. We're only gonna go one or two minutes. Inhale, one. Exhale, shoulders soften. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, four. Exhale. Inhale, five. Exhale through the nose. Five more. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, four. Exhale. Inhale, five. Exhale. Gently blink your eyes, coming to open attention. We're going to do our final reading, crazy love notes to ourselves. Let's see. Oh, I like this. You are healing. Ironically, it has the poppies. We're in the month of November, thinking of a remember, Remembrance Day. Healing happens in seasons. It can't be forced or rushed to fit a schedule. So often we curse the seeds we, that have taken root, failing to realize it's not their time. They need more water, sunlight, and care. 
Bullying ourselves blocks regeneration. Also, sometimes the healing we're focused on isn't the healing that's taking place. There's a much deeper healing going on. Be patient. You are healing. Maybe that's your homework is to look at what do you feel is improving or getting better in your life that's obvious to you. And maybe there's something not so obvious that is the universe is working its magic on. Thank you so much for your effort. Good in me. Cease the good in you. Namaste.